So, you saw my GPU buyer's guide and you were like, Man, not a lot of options out there for me if I want a graphics card. And then you watched my uh, CPU secondary market impact video with Ryzen upcoming that looks to be pretty awesome and the G4560 and you were like, well shit, can't buy CPUs neither. And by extensions, can't buy motherboards. I mean, we're already into the DDR4 era as it is, but now we're adding new sockets. Obviously, we need to get motherboards that will support the processors we want to buy. So that's sort of off the table for right now, at least. So is there anything at this moment here in uh, almost March of 2017 that you can buy secondhand. And I'm here to tell you that absolutely, yes, there is indeed. <laughs> the developers of Northgard and I are teaming up to give away a free copy of the game to one of you. Stay tuned to the end of the video to find out more. Right here. We got something called an SSD. Don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna pull it real close there. Now this is an old OCZ 30 gigabytes uh, Vertex series. Vertex series. This is like the original Vertex series. This is an ain't, ain't no fucking two, no fucking three. And uh, man, that's old. That still works though. Now we're currently amidst a NAND shortage and it's kind of bumping SSD prices up just a wee wee bit. So naturally that opens the door to buy these things used. Now I don't know if I've specifically spoke about in great detail why you can buy these used comfortably so I'll do that now. <music> Solid state drives are exactly that. They are solid state, so there's no moving parts in here, so there's no risk of mechanical failure, which is one of the reasons that hard drives are kind of an iffy bet when buying secondhand. But they fall into the same category as RAM and CPUs in terms of their durability. Let's think about what these things are physically. Forget about what they do, what's under the hood. Let's examine them from a purely sort of like looking at it, what the fuck is this kind of perspective. So a CPU is a PCB. A bunch of contacts on it, some very, very tiny little capacitors on the back, and an IHS on the top to sort of shield the die from any physical damage. In addition to other things, obviously it spreads heat too, but one of the other benefits that it does provide is that you got yourself a nice solid uh, casing, a shell for this little fucking turtle. And next you got your RAM, pretty much the same thing by design. You've got ICs that are covered up by a heat spreader, once again, shielding it from the elements, sort of a side benefit, on a plain ass green ugly PCB with connectors on the bottom. So once again, very solid piece of machinery. But the king daddy of them all here is the SSD, because the SSD, unless you're talking about an NVMe drive that's M.2, I mean, those are actually pretty bare when compared to these, but SATA drives are rock solid. They are not only like this and that they're just a series of fucking NAND chips and a controller on a PCB. They're also shielded in, in some cases, a solid metal or at least a plastic casing. So as where these are relatively protected from the environment, from dust and things like that, these things are almost entirely protected from them. You can't, you, I mean, you have to get some serious tools uh, that aren't a screwdriver, of course, but to, to break this shit apart, I mean, you can't just go at this with a butter knife and damage it. It takes some effort to get in one of these fucking things, and that makes them especially resilient. The only vulnerabilities, of course, are on the connectors, and these are the weakest parts, by the way. When SSDs do fail, the majority of the time it is because these connectors at the back here have usually passed their insertion rating and will break. And that's just an inevitability of any electronic. But since you rarely plug these in and out, they last practically forever. Solid state drives not only are incredibly durable in terms of their resilience and physical strength, they're also incredibly resilient in terms of their lifespan and usage. Now, assuming you're not targeting a drive that's this old, I mean, this thing probably does not have a lot of life rights left on it, that's for sure. But I will tell you, and in my experience, and of course this is limited to just my experience, I have owned probably 750 to 1,000 SSDs in my lifetime, and not a single one has ever come into my house for use in a repair job or a build that has had greater than 10 terabytes of life rights. And the majority of drives manufactured in the last two, three, even four years are all MLC drives that are at a minimum certified for like 70 terabytes of rights. So you gotta ask yourself why. Why is that the case? Why is it that every SSD that comes into my house is so underutilized? And that's because the average user, the average buyer of a laptop that had one pre-installed, which is where the majority of these come from, by the way, when I get them, are the kind of users that browse Facebook, they look at porn, they message their grandmother, they Skype once in a while. None of this is particularly right heavy. So you've got brand new, virtually brand new SSDs coming out of these 
three or four year old laptops that are in perfect working condition because the person who owned them in the first place didn't use them to their full potential. I will admit that if you look at the Adnan Tech reviews, and they do a great job, by the way, their SSD reviews are fantastic and incredibly thorough. Yes, there is a big difference between a Crucial MX100 that was produced like three or four years ago compared to the MX300 of today. Things have improved. There's definitely a stark difference in a lot of different tests that will clearly demonstrate that, and I am not denying that there is a difference. But here is the truth, people, and this is the truth I want you to hear and understand. The difference between a bad SSD and a good SSD on the SATA protocol especially is practically zero for the average user. Again, when you read these non-tech reviews and you look at their, oh, look at the deeper Q depths and the IOPS, they're just so dramatically different. Look at how performance drops off after two continuous minutes of writes. Yeah, all this stuff is true, but you, as the average user, even as a power user, someone who games regularly, who streams even, someone who maybe even content creates on a, some level, maybe you're a musician, a recording engineer, you make videos like me, you will never fucking notice. You will never notice the difference. You can put two drives in one system, and you can sit any user down who has just a passing knowledge of how these drives work and ask them to boot from each of them. And I guarantee you, they won't be able to tell the difference. And the reason for all this is pretty simple. The majority of what makes an SSD feel fast, and we're talking about feel fast in terms of the average user in daily life has to do with something called seek times and the fact that SSDs essentially don't have them. So a mechanical hard drive has to spin up and the fucking little header thing has to go to the right spot to pull data off of your drive and subsequently to write to it as well. So there's a lot of actual moving that's going on, hence the delay. Sometimes if your drive's not in the right position or isn't spinning up, you go to open something, it'll take a second or two before it pops up on your screen, whether it be editing an image or opening a media file. But with an SSD, even the worst of controllers will pull data off of that drive almost instantly, as soon as you click it. This is what makes SSDs so good. That snappiness, that yeah, Windows feels good, I boot up quick kind of bullshit. So for your purposes, as just the average schlub, average gamer, average guy just trying to play himself some Grand Theft Auto, you ain't gonna notice a fucking difference between one SSD and the next. The only thing that does matter in terms of performance is reliability. You wanna make sure that the thing always boots up, that it writes properly and reads properly. And the nice thing about buying secondhand drives is that these have been properly vetted by everyone in the community for the last however many fucking years. So as we're a new SSD, you might not be able to find a review for yet, especially if it's from a brand that's not particularly popular. The older drives have been reviewed to fuck. So essentially this gets to be like, you know, hardware Tinder. I mean, you're sitting there on your phone, you're swiping left, you're swiping right. And if you see a Vertex series SSD up for sale, no matter what price it is, you just fucking swipe whatever way it is you swipe when the shit. <laughs> And lastly, of course, we have price considerations, which of course is probably what you're most interested to hear in this video. And uh, here I got myself an 850 Pro, 256 gigabyte. I bought for $75, that's on the high end. And for the same volume of SSD, roughly, we have a, this is a, a, a 240 gigabyte it's Samsung 840, just regular, not even Evo. This is like an 840, it's like the lowest version. I got uh, this for 45. So that gives you a pretty good idea of what sort of price you should be aiming. In Canadian dollars, remember, for 240 to 256 gigabyte drives, but you can get 128s or 160s even, and those are rare, I know, but they do exist for even less than that. So here we still have for my last stash, some uh, Intel 520s. These are all 160 or 180 gigabyte drives in some cases that I picked up for $30 a piece, Canadian funds once again. It's an insane deal. So obviously SSD prices uh, secondhand are still considerably better than what you can buy new today, especially when you consider that prices are inching up ever so slowly and progressively thanks to this NAND shortage that we're currently mired in. Anyhow guys, I think we'll call that one a video. On to Northguard. So if you are interested in getting a copy of Northguard for your Steam account, which is a game currently under development by Shiro Games, the people behind Evil Land and Evil Land 2, which the latter of which happens to be one of my favoriteest 
fucking Steam games in existence. I played the shit out of it. If you want a copy of Northgard, join me tomorrow, Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern, and I will be giving it away to one of the people who is in the stream and watching me play the game for the first time. How that all came about was really interesting, actually. I was just on Reddit, they were doing an AMA in one of the PC gaming subreddits, and I said, I've got a channel of 5,500 people, would you be interested in giving a gift key away to one of my viewers in exchange for a small plug on one of my videos? And they said, that's fine, no problem. And in fact, I'll do you one better. We'll give your viewers a key and we'll give something to you for the favor. And I said, well, I, I don't need that, but what I can do then is redeem that key and do a stream. And that's how the stream came about. And I'll give away the key during that stream and everybody's happy. So it was a very fair and equitable uh, agreement, I guess, in principle. It's sort of a handshake agreement. There's no legal mumbo jumbo involved. It's just two small independent operations, me, a content creator, and them, a developer, trying to cross promote. I don't endorse people, and you guys know how I feel about sponsorships. I'm very skeptical of whenever a company approaches an influencer and says, hey, why don't you push my product on your people? It's, I value your viewership. I would never force something on you that was crap. This game looks pretty well reviewed and the company is one I believe in. They are a small independent developer. They're very active, very involved, and they are using the early access system on Steam the way it was intended to be used and seemingly responsibly. So when I go to play this game tomorrow, it's gonna be the first time I'm gonna be doing it. I will give you my live impressions of the game. They will be truthful and honest, uh, but I wanted to give them a leg up and give you guys something in return. I think everybody wins in this scenario. So please join me once again at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow, that is Saturday, February 25th, I think, if today's the 24th, which I think it is, and I'm going to keep doing this because I like to dance. Anyhow, once again, as always, thank you for watching, guys, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, subscribe, smash, or pass, whatever else is trending on YouTube that will get me popular, and I'll see you again soon.